Hey guys, how's it going? Coderman here. A few videos ago, I created one on six things I love about the BMW M3, and I figured that it'd be fitting to create one on six things that I hate. Now, this list is not going to be, you know, breaking things or, or super important things. It's more or less just things that I find annoying or, you know, they should potentially fix, although they don't make this car anymore, so I guess they won't be. So first off, let me start by saying there's not a whole hell of a lot that I hate about this car. Uh, I found it to be the most well-sorted of the cars that I've owned, driven, been in, whatever. Uh, it has a few little interesting uh, idiosyncrasies that I just don't love, but for the most part, I feel like it's an all-around great you know, driver car, track car, just daily commuter, whatever. You know, so we'll start off with the probably the most obvious thing that I hate about this car and that's the torque you know on the highway you drop a gear you got you know you got some pretty good power but coming off the line from a light it just doesn't have a lot of torque down low you know I mean that's it's partially because it's a high revving v8 but it just it you know it leaves something to be desired now you can you know you can go ahead and tune it although you're not gonna get too much out of that really if you want to get a lot of low-end torque out of this car you really have to supercharge or turbocharge it. Now I've looked at that and I actually created a video that I'll link in here on you know whether I should sell this or supercharge it. And I'm not 100% certain what I'm gonna do yet, but I'm leaning towards supercharge purely because of the power gains and it just would be like having a whole new car. You know, the second thing that I hate about this car is the interior. Now, what I mean by that is not, you know, the leather seats or the dash or any of the trim pieces. It's just the quality of the material. You know, so there's these buttons in the center console, the lower, you know, lower center console here that have for, you can, uh, you know, change the power, which increases the throttle response. There's the dynamic stability control and electronic dampering. And these buttons, you know, while maybe the DSC I push a lot, every single one except the power button is super loose. You know, at the time, this car has just over 60,000 miles. And I mean, to me, that's just some, that's just a weird thing to break, a weird thing to, to break down. Now the replacement for it, believe it or not, you can't just replace a button. You have to buy the entire assembly. And from Turner Motorsports, it's about 150 bucks. Uh, it's about a five minute install, but it just, you know that, that's what it is it costs that so you either deal with it or you fix it the third thing that I don't like about this car or rather hate about this car is the the shifter now I have the six-speed transmission which I absolutely love I you know it was one of the things that I in my video of you know six things I love because I do but stock it's not great it has a really long throw and the clutch itself isn't super accurate and what I mean by that is it's like a lot of cars, when you push the clutch in, you kind of can find the bite point right away. And this one seems to have a little bit of slop, a little bit of inconsistency in where it is. Now, for the shift, for the clutch, you could put a new clutch in. Uh, for the shifter, you know, you could throw, put a, a short throw shifter. Or what actually, what I've come to find out, and I've yet to do the mod, but I want to do it hopefully this spring, is to get the, um, I believe it's the ZCP or ZHP weighted shift knob and you do a little modification and you put that in and it just tightens up the shifts. It just has a, a more firm feel. Uh, so if I go ahead and do that, I'll create a video and review on that. And actually I may put together both of those, the, the switches down in the center console and the, uh, the shift knob in boot combination, uh, only because you do have to do some cutting, you do have to do some wiring if you wanna keep the illuminated uh, M logo on the shift knob. And, you know, hey, it may be pretty cool. It may help some people. So I'll go ahead and create that. And I actually forgot one. You know, I spoke about the shifter. But one thing that, and it's not specific to this car, it's just this is my first manual transmission car that I've owned, is traffic. I don't know about you, but having a manual car in traffic has got to be the worst thing, uh, especially when you drive around for clients all week. But at the end of the day, I still love shifting gears, so I wouldn't change it. I just, this very moment is when I think, hey, DCT, not a bad option. Which incidentally, a fellow YouTuber actually just, I think last week, created a great video on 
why you should not discount the DCT. His, uh, his name's Tedward on YouTube. You probably already follow him, but if you don't, go check him out. I'll leave a uh, link in the description. So the, f the fourth thing that I, you know, air quotes hate is the, M the M3 tax. And what that is, is anytime you want to buy a part or want to have service done on your car, it's going to cost more. It doesn't necessarily need to. It's just a lot of companies, they make parts and stuff that just cost more. Now, I know if you have like an exotic or even a high end, higher end luxury car, that's understandable. But I mean, me personally, and don't hate me, but I feel like the M3, there's quite a few of them in the world. So the parts shouldn't be, you know, quite as expensive for what they are, you know, excluding rare parts, carbon, that sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, you go and do, you know, get like oil for it or the, you know, the different maintenance things. You know, I think the clutch plate is, I think it's like, a th or the clutch, sorry, the clutch setup, I believe is like a thousand dollars. And, you know, I mean, that's not terribly bad, but it's not, also not great. You know, but go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the, you know, the ownership and the M3 tax. I'm curious if I'm just, you know, way out of left field or if it seems like the brand is just kind of has this extra cost associated with it. And I'm not even talking performance parts. I get that. I, you know, I want, if I'm going on the track or something, I want a nice performance part. Uh, sorry for the real bright light. I'm on the highway heading to a client's office and I'm essentially heading into the sun. So it's actually brighter for me. The fifth thing that I hate about the BMW M3 is kind of the association that it brings. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, when you drive it, a lot of people assume that you're a jerk, you know, you're not going to use your turn signal, you're not going to obey the speed limit or whatever. And sometimes it can be kind of annoying. Um, you know, like if you're trying to merge, I've seen many instances actually where you know, I'm trying to merge into a highway or pull out or something and people actually speed up, which I guess is fine. You know, they get their first big deal, but I know it's because they just assume that I'm going to cut them off or they just assume that I'm going to do some dumb shit. And Unfortunately, that's because a lot of people that drive sports cars or high performance cars or whatever tend to, you know, act like jerks. Um, I mean, hell, even exotic cars, it's the same thing. I have a bunch of friends that have, you know, various exotic cars and they kind of break that stigma. You know, they drive well and appreciate things and do charity events and whatever. So, I mean, it's just kind of like, I like to kind of fly under the radar and just go about my day and... I find if I'm driving this versus a different car, I just have more, more people that want to have a bit of an attitude on the highway or whatever, and also more people that want to race. I, it's funny for me to say that, you know, it's not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or anything, but I'll pull up to a, uh, you know, to a stoplight or something, and I'll look over on the side, and there's a guy that wants to race. And personally, I don't get it. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it is what it is, but it's, sometimes it's fun. Uh, I think part of it may have to do with my exhaust if I have it open. I mean, it's just really loud, so I think it catches people's attention. The sixth and final thing that I hate about the BMW M3, or specifically the E92 M3, is that BMW stopped making it. I find this to be the most well-sorted of the platform. Uh, I love the F80 series. I just wish it had this engine or a V8 in itself. You know, a V8 or even the V10 would be awesome. I just, I can't stand the sound of the new you know, the newer model, um, you know, performance wise, it blows this out of the water in every category, but unless you're racing it on the Nürburgring or, you know, street racing it or whatever, sometimes you just want to have a well sounding, well sorted car. And for me, that's been this. And really that's why I have such a hard time deciding to sell it. And at this point, there's only two cars on the list that could, pot it could potentially cause me to sell this car. And, you know, if those don't happen, then I'm going to keep it. And I'll go back to whether I should supercharge it or not, which is, I get it, it's a first world problem. And I'm not trying to make light of it like, oh, I don't know what to spend my money on. It's nothing like that at all. It's a matter of, I don't want to mess with the balance of the car and create this high horsepower car that I don't want to drive. So there you go. There's my six things that I hate about the BMW M3. Hopefully it provides a little bit of insight onto the platform. I know I spoke about a couple of products and uh, you know future things that I want to do. 
Uh, go ahead and leave a comment below if you know you own one or you want to own one or have any questions about it. I'm always open to conversation. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video. If you didn't, please dislike it. it either way, it gives me feedback on what content's resonating with the audience. If you're new here, please subscribe. Check out some of my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.